Welcome to Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. There's a hot button issue that seems to have overshadowed all others, even the war in Iraq. And I'm talking about illegal immigration. Not immigration, illegal immigration. And there are two opposing groups that seem to have risen to the forefront in this issue. One is the Border Angels, and the other is the Minuteman Project. We'll meet their leaders as soon as we get back from this short break, so stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California, and I'm Lynn Harper. And as promised, we have two leaders of two of the uh, groups that have come to the forefront in the issue of illegal immigration. First with me is Enrique Morones, and Enrique is the founder of the Border Angels. Thank you so much, Enrique, for being here. My pleasure, Lynn. And um, on the other side of the coin, so to speak, uh, the executive director of the group known as the Minuteman Project, Stephen Eichler. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, as one of my guests mentioned earlier, you'd have to be in a cave not to know about these two groups. For those of you who may not know, I'd like these leaders to tell you a little bit about their groups, starting with Enrique, the Border Angels. Enrique, tell us about them. Sure. Well, Border Angels was established in the mid-1980s, and actually up in this area, up in the north county of San Diego. And we got started through the church in outreach to migrant communities that are displaced, that are, uh, don't have water many times, don't have food, sometimes are living in the shadows. And we thought it was very important to help our fellow man. So what we started doing back in 1987 is going into the canyons of North County, San Diego, bringing water and food and ministering to them a little bit to seeing how we could help our fellow man. Everything changed in the mid-1990s when Operation Gatekeeper started, which started in October of 1994. We've continued to do the outreach in the canyons, but then we started putting our emphasis in the, the border areas, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, especially California and Arizona where we have set up some rescue stations where we put water in the summer, blankets in the winter, and our mission statement is very clear. Our mission statement says, if I was hungry, did you give me to eat? If I was thirsty, did you give me to drink? We're a faith-based group. We're all volunteers, and we've been doing this for a long time. We wish we didn't have to do it because that would mean people aren't dying in the desert, but unfortunately, since Operation Gatekeeper started, there's been from four to 10,000 deaths along the border, people coming from the Mexican border across to the U.S., and, and many of them dying. And these are economic migrants that are coming here looking for a, a better economic situation. It's tragic. So we're going to continue to do our work. We're a faith-based group, and we help our fellow man, documented or undocumented. It doesn't matter. We're all human beings, and, and we're trying to help our fellow man. Oh, thanks, Enrique. But April 1st of last year, mm -hmm. I believe, a new group started, the Minuteman Project. And uh, Jim Gilchrist was... Um, the, the founder, one of the founders of the Minutemen Project, and actually we actually had him as a guest on our Inside Southern California talking about um, situation in this country and another mm -hmm. guest talking about Iraq. Mm -hmm. And you've joined us today because you're the executive director. Yes. Tell us more about the Minutemen Project, Stephen Eichler. The Minutemen Project really got off in uh, the first part of October 2004 when Mr. Jim Gilchrist realized that this was an egregious issue at the border and with the illegal immigration and he decided he was going to do something that one man can make a difference. So on April 1st, 2005, he went to the border with his uh, lawn chair and his cell phone and his binoculars. And there with 800 other, you know, men and men and women, they started to observe and report uh, suspicious activity at the border. And since then, we have grown to over 200,000 men and men and men and women across America. So we're an extremely fast-growing organization trying to address this issue of illegal immigration, calling national attention to it, and uh, America is responding in a very positive manner. Now, speaking of America responding, I have listening, who doesn't listen to television, we listen to radio, um, op-ed columns. What I've done here is compile a number of beliefs from all of these sources. And I'm going to ask my guests, I'm going to throw out these beliefs, and I think I'll start with you, Enrique. I'm just going to talk about the beliefs. Enrique, if you would respond, Steve, if you would respond to Enrique, why not? This is the belief that illegal immigrants take the jobs of Americans that Americans won't do, like you haven't heard that before. Right. Comment. It's, uh, well, you know, just to make a couple of clarifications. This, this Minuteman movement is an old movement. Before there were the KKK, uh, Chris Simcox was there before Jim Gilchrist. And these are groups that would, would, uh, what was not mentioned was that they're also carrying guns. We see the swastikas, the Confederate flags. 
So this, there's no room in America for this type of a vigilante group. And the migrants that are crossing the border, that have been crossing the border for hundreds of years, are economic migrants in, 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 in the vast majority. And they're coming here to do the work that either nobody else will do, or they're coming here to do the work that other people will not do at the same uh, wage scale. We believe that there should be a way for them to come here in a legal manner, have some sort of a system that they could come and get documented, like they have in Canada or like they have in the European Common Union. The average age of the American public is 40 years old. The average age of the Mexican person is 26 years old. We need the labor force. We need to have people that can work in the fields, work in construction, and you need younger people for that type of situation. Both Business Week, the Wall Street Journal, and, and, and respected publications like this have said that the undocumented community is a positive impact on the economy of the United States, and the work that they're doing is very important work that needs to be done. There's a shortage right now. There's a shortage in agricultural workers, construction workers across the country. So they're not taking the jobs away from anybody. There is a need for these workers. What we're saying is that we want them to be able to come here in a humane manner, be able to get in some sort of a line which does not exist for them right now because of their economic level, and that way they can get a document and cross. Because nobody wants the criminals, whether they're born in the United States or anywhere else in the world, those people should be locked up. These are, this is not a criminal element. These are human beings that are coming here to do the work. And then when was the last time you saw a Latino on a corner with a sign that says, we'll work for food? You just don't see it. You'll see 10 of them at the Home Depot ready to jump in your car, but the people are not here for the handouts. They're here to do the hard work, to pick our fruit, to pick our flowers, to build our houses, to take care of our kids. So they're productive members of society, and we should have them come out of the shadows, be able to get a, a visa, be able to become a resident if they want. But we want them to have some sort of a line to get into so they can become documented. They're a positive impact, and they are doing the work that nobody else will okay, do. Okay, now that having been said, you gentlemen have never actually been face-to-face. -face. No. And so you, Enrique would be on a show, and then you or Jim Gilchrist would be on a show, and then it was a he said, he said. Mm -hmm. You never get a chance to immediately respond. Right. So Steve Eichler, on behalf of the <laughs> okay. Minuteman Project, here's Enrique. You heard what he said. Of What's course. your response? Well, there are several issues here. First of all, we've been classed with the KKK. We've been classed with the Nazis and everything else. That's a complete misnomer, and that's not correct at all. If you take a look at our website at MinutemanProject.com, you can see that about 20% of our members are black. We have another 20% are Hispanic. And it has nothing to do with race. That's an easy card to play, the race card. It has nothing to do with that. It's the sovereignty of the United States of America. It has nothing to do with what color is their skin. We didn't have a problem with race when uh, we were fighting arm to arm and shoulder to shoulder in the trenches in Vietnam and World War II. Of course not. The same thing is in question here. We are fighting for our nation. We meaning all the people of the United States of America, whatever shape, size, color, national origin. And what Mr. Jim Gilchrist did, he's a combat wounded veteran, received the Purple Heart, two presidential citations. What he did is say there's a problem at the border. There's a problem with illegal aliens coming into the United States. Yes, some of those folks are coming here and yes they are dying but it's not because the United States is bad it's because of what's happened in Mexico there's something wrong with a nation which pushes their young men and their young women out of their country And there's something very very wrong with Vicente Fox saying go north pilgrim go to the frontier go there go get a job when the very heart of Mexico is being cut out and they don't have the Mexican dream. They don't have the, the dream of having a home and a family or, or building a business that, that the federales won't come and, and raid. They don't have that. Okay, so there's something that, wrong Steve. with the nation. Um, Enrique, let's speak that to that. that. Uh, from what Steve said, I hear another belief would be why don't the people who come here and march in the streets march in Mexico and get things changed there? I want to know that too. Sure. And you're a spokesman. There's 200 million undocumented people in the world. The United States only has 5% of them. So this phenomenon of people going from the poor country to the rich country happens all over the world. In none of those do you have racist vigilante groups on the border with the exception of the United States. The statement that 40% of the people that are Minutemen are of color is, is a documented lie. That's not true. Here you have Jim Gilchrist, who was dismissed from the military because of psychological
technical problems. Chris Simcox, a child abuser. These are the leaders of the, of the movement. Yeah, but that's not my question. No, but, but I think it's important. Why, why to, not? I understand. Because, but, but because, because I wish we had six hours. Right. But we don't. I want to know what you think about why not march in Mexico and fix things there. Right. That's what I want to okay. know. Okay. Uh, but, but I think it's important to, 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 to talk about the facts and, and not you know, just throw I out these quotations. I understand. I understand. We'll get there. There are people. There are people that are protesting. We just did a massive demonstration. We went from San Diego to Washington, D.C. We went to 40 cities in 27 days. Our next stop is Mexico. I'm going to Mexico today, as a matter ah, of fact. Okay. And what we're saying is, first of all, President Fox is not wanting the people to leave. He's never made that statement. Why would you want people to leave your own country? People have been going from country to country for hundreds of years. We'd want to keep these workers in Mexico. The economic policies of the United States definitely affect the world, especially neighboring countries. And because of NAFTA and CAFTA and legislation like this, the poorer people suffer. So they're going looking to provide for their families. This happens all over the world. No, the fact you, that we're you, neighboring that's, countries, that's the fact that we're neighboring countries has affected this. So people in Mexico, like on May 1st, we're going to have a demonstration. In Mexico. There. In Mexico, the they're saying, question. hey, you know, we want human rights. We want an opportunity to provide for our own families. It's improving. It, Mexico has gone from about the 26th economic power in the world to about the 12th. But there's a huge difference between even the second economic power of the world, Japan, and the first. Huge, huge difference. And here you have, looking right across the border, at where you can make 10 20 $30 an hour, and in your own country, you might only make that in a week if you're lucky. So the temptation is too great. Mexico needs to do more, no doubt. They are improving the situation, but it doesn't happen overnight. And, and okay. you'll start seeing the flow slow down. And also the fact is, even if Mexico does get to the situation where they could provide for their own people, you still need the workers here in the United States. It doesn't solve okay. that issue. And no, then no, I see you not, wanting to... Yeah, wanting that's to not say. exactly correct. That's not... Okay. When I, so when wrap up that thought, Steve, okay. because I've got a lot okay. of beliefs when that I, I want you to When I was speaking to the Urban about. League down in Los Angeles, there was black folk down there in, the, in that community being displaced by illegal aliens. They can't get those jobs any longer because contractors are busing in illegal aliens to do these jobs. They're displacing the black folk down there, and those black folks are becoming victims. And that is not right. That is immoral. F furthermore, the people that are coming in here are people that are not going home. They're not migrants, like, let's come here and get the job and then go home. They're coming here, and they're staying, and they will not assimilate. They will not become people that can build the United States. Okay, now the, what, Steve, yeah. you're actually leading into the next okay. belief. I'm going to take a quick break, only because I don't want to um, get into this and all of a sudden have to stop one of you when you're, okay. when you're in the middle of making a point. So let us take a break right now. We will come back and we will get into what the common beliefs are about illegal immigration because we have the two leaders of the two, I hate to say opposing parties, but it's shaping up that way. Let's call, let's call it what it is. So when we get back, we are going to talk to Enrique Morones. We're going to talk to Stephen Eichler, and we're going to find out what the next belief is and see what you have to say about it. This is Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California. My guest, Enrique Morones of the Border Angels and Steve Eichler of the Minuteman Project. And again, thank you for being here. And I also want to thank, speaking of thanking, NBC 739, uh, Mi San Diego TV 43 for the footage that you're looking at. Um, our thanks to you. Another belief that I've culled from um, papers and talk show and so forth, and this is an interesting one. There's a belief out there from some letter writers protesting in America via boycotts, skipping school, waving the Mexican flag, may backfire and cause reactions that possibly you, you wouldn't be happy with. So what, what do you think about backfiring? Well, what we're doing is, when you've seen the massive demonstrations that have taken place across America, the six million people that have come out and marched and said, you know, we too are America, we see that the consensus is definitely in our favor that we have been waving the American flag because we're part of America. On May 1st, there will be an economic boycott where people will not be doing any shopping. Now, what we're going to be doing, our group, the coalition that did the massive march on April 9th, that was tried, they tried to disrupt it, the Minutemen tried to disrupt it, but we were very successful in getting out there, showing that the consensus is with us, that we have the overwhelming growth in, in this popular movement, is we're going to be having a rally in Balboa Park. We're going to be doing voter registration. We're going to be sending letters to Senators Feinstein and Boxer. We're going to be educating people about what's happening in this country with legislative reform. 
Because we too are America, and we've assimilated just like anybody else. The, but the do you see is, the resentment, though, Enrique? Do you see the, the resentment, resentment for what? For the resentment of people saying, "Why are they waving the Mexican flag? This is America." And the the question that I asked was, "Do you think there'll be a backlash?" For instance, um, just yesterday or today, as you know, there was a crackdown, and more than a thousand illegal aliens, um, illegal aliens. That sounds. People who were in this country illegally were taken off the job, and something happened that's pretty rare. The suits, the business guys, the guys that ran the company are also under arrest. Do you think without all the protests and the marches that would have happened? Well, the thing is that uh, there should be sanctions on these employers, and the fact that it's taking place right now I don't think is a coincidence. I think that the, the party that's in power right now has never been a friend of the undocumented or the, the migrant that's come here from other countries, because what we do is we, we say it's their actions, not their words. We're seeing where this legislation is all coming from. It's coming from the right wing, from the Republican Party, San Sanbrenner, Hunter, Schwarzenegger, T Tancredo. These people are extremists. And, and what's taking place is that the waving of the Mexican flag by some individuals, because they're proud of the roots of their families. We don't see these complaints on, on St. Patrick's Day with the Irish flag or but, other but, countries. But what, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But we you, have but the American flag predominantly. What about the president, though? What about President Bush? The, the again, the beliefs, you know, right? I've, I've culled this from this. is I, I have... Um, definite opinions, which you will not see here because it has, not, has nothing to do sure. with anything. What I'm saying is they, they see that President Bush, uh, in fact, I've heard some talk show hosts refer to him as, as Vicente Bush, you know. What do you think about Bush's apparent feelings and his true agenda? Are they the same or are they at odds? No, they're, they're at odds because it's not what uh, he says, I, it's what he does. The only time I've agreed with President Bush is when he called the Minutemen vigilantes. That's about the only time I've agreed with him. But we see that the consensus. Fighting the majority, words, I got a minute, man. Well, over the, here. The, the, the thing is that you know, they're, you know, the, the 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 thing is, we can back up our statements with facts. Forty percent of the minute men are of color. That's what he said earlier in the show. I want you to look at their websites. Okay, where I it swear says, you said twenty percent. Machetes Steve. promoting hate. That that is racism. Okay, There's let's no move on over it. now. Um, you, I don't. You didn't say forty percent. No, we, we have twenty. Said we have twenty percent. About twenty percent. About twenty percent are, are uh, so black it. folks, and about twenty percent are, are okay, Latinos. So let's get back to that. So it's on our website, the minimanproject.com. Take do a look. Do you find that's up to forty percent? Do you yeah. find that yeah. the protest in the streets? And I'm not talking about the anti-protest, but the mm -hmm. protesters. Do you feel there might be a backlash, caused a backlash? What's no, this absolutely. There's a huge backlash. And how do you back that up? Tell me oh, what you think. Okay, first of all, um, these are foreign nationals that have come here. They have come here and skirted the system. They can't vote. Young people were taken out of school to join the rallies. We have, we have documentation that proves that these foreign nationals are here waving the red, white, and green. Not the red, white, and blue. You have footage. The facts are very simple. They're not demanding their rights. They're demanding our rights, the rights of every citizen here. So the, fact, the facts are very clear, and they speak for themselves. The Minuteman Project at our website has addressed those issues. And it's very simple that these people that have come here illegally haven't come to take the jobs that Americans don't want. They've come here to not assimilate and create their own culture, like La Raza. I don't know if this gentleman is a member of La Raza or not, but La Raza means Well, let's the race. find out. That's the beauty of yeah. having Enrique Morona sitting remember right Remember the La Raza? Are you a member of La Raza? The, La Raza means the human race. Right. Well, that means the race. The, human race. the race. The right. race. Well, different. Question, that's, that's, answer. That's right. That's and the right. thing is, I want you to say, what, what is La Raza? What is uh, these terminology that you're using out there? The, La Raza. You, the, the race. The human race. You're a member no, of the human not, race. the race. And your model is for inside the race everything outside the race it's not my nothing. model that's not my model that's the model of la raza and, and that you're the, a member the, of the thing is that you're you were asking me if i was a member i said we're all members of the human race now you're accusing me of being a member of, of some organization that has some sort of a statement which i'm not familiar with and there is no such organization like that la and, and the thing is the overwhelming majority of the people that have joined us in the protest you had a ma i gotta admit you did have a massive protest for the minutemen i think you had 15 people show up <laughs> we had a massive protest in san diego we had 150,000 people mm -hmm. And most of those people, like has been across the country, are documented people. Mm -hmm. They're either residents or they're citizens, like I am, born here or they became legal, like the overwhelming majority of Latinos that are here in this country, the overwhelming majority of migrants in this country. Mm -hmm. And you still don't back off of the 40% of the people of color being Minutemen. I've gone out there, and, and I've been out there, and you know that I've been out there. The only thing I see out there is Jim Gilchrist bumper stickers, W bumper stickers. You don't see any John Kerry stickers. You rarely see people of color. You rarely see, see women. And this is, a, and how about addressing well, the issue of the Confederate flag? Well, you haven't obviously been to our website. You don't it's see, not see, we're not going to respond in kind. It's not what you're saying. It's what you're doing. We're not going to respond in kind. You have a million. We have a million. You have two million. We have two million. We're not look responding at, in kind. Look at the numbers we're, on the streets. Okay, and now, and now, this yeah, leads into, 
another belief okay. I'd like to throw out. This I'm going to start with you now, Steve, okay. and work over to Enrique. The belief, and this is from the letter writers, the mm -hmm. talk show callers, inners, or whatever, uh, belief that health care, schools, and prisons are being overwhelmed due to, get this, illegal mm -hmm. immigrants. Not immigrants, illegal immigrants. Sure. Your response, Steve Eichler. When you have three battalions coming across the southern border every week, illegal immigrants come here. And those illegal immigrants demand services. They don't have the money to pay, so where do they go? They go into the hospital emergency wards. Why do they do that? Because they have been taught in a socialistic nation that there is free health care. They take those beliefs and they bring it into this system and they show up at these emergency rooms and they shut down hospitals. They want medical care. They demand medical care. And because of the way that the U.S. system is set up and the health care is the hospitals and so forth, that care is given to the point where the hospital simply goes bankrupt. In addition to that, when you take a look at the statistics, there is documented evidence that over 31% of the, the men and women that are in a penitentiary is here with an illegal immigrant um, status. Okay, so you've talked about the prisons, you've talked about mm -hmm. the health care. Let's talk schools now, okay. then I'm going to go to the okay. schools. The schools are pretty obvious. Mr. Uh, Villaragosa, he wants to take over the school district in Los Angeles. And why does he want to do that? Well, he is a member of MECHA. A MECHA or is an organization which is against the United States of America and against what the United States stands for. Freedom and justice for all. And what he's trying to do is inculcate those students to be able to somehow put away the rights of everyone and only have the rights of illegal immigrants. If somehow illegal immigrants are a preferred class, as somehow those children get the right to bilingual education, get the right to be able to come here, as, as some have coined it, anchor baby, babies under the 14th Amendment. Okay, now, before I move to Enrique, I have a question. How do you know that's what's in Villaragosa's mind? I'm just curious. Well, if you read the article that was published yesterday in the Los Angeles Times, which is um, what, 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 April the 20th, yeah, April 19th, over the, over okay, the net, yeah. when, when you read that, you can see that his intent is to be able to take the Los Angeles School District and mold it into his idea. His idea is designed to help the illegal immigrant children not to assimilate, but to simply say, we are still Mexicans, or we are still Guatemalans, or we are still foreign nationals. And not saying, we want to uh, assimilate here, we want to be Americans. I don't see anybody lining up at the Selective Service Office and saying, I want to join the military, that's how I can become a okay, citizen. Okay, now we need to move to Enrique, because I know there's at least three or four points that you need to, to address. So I'm going to allow you to address them in any fashion sure. you want to. Well, I think, once again, we've got to go to the facts. There's, no, there's more Mexican-Americans, Medal of Honor winners, in foreign wars from this country than any other community in the United States. Uh, Antonio Villarraigosa is a friend of mine. He's the mayor of Los Angeles because he was or is a member of MECHA. It's, and MECHA is a student empowerment organization like every ethnic community has to help kids continue on to college. So whether there's radical elements in that or in, the, in, in, in other organizations, there, there might be, but I know that he's not a radical, nor is, is Metro a radical organization. The prison system does have some undocumented people, the same percentage that, that are in other countries. It's about 3%. It's not 31%. Okay, that, so let's numbers, talk about schools and let's talk about health care. The school That's system what the needs to be improved, being. no doubt about it. That has nothing to do with the undocumented community. We contribute billions of dollars to Social Security on sales taxes, on, on service taxes that we're paying when we're buying products here in the, state, in the United States. So what about so, health care? And the health care needs to, we need universal health care. But that, those issues have nothing to do with the undocumented community. The well, undocumented, there's a belief, you, I'm telling you. Now. Well, this the, is the, the belief yeah, of people. There's That's, a belief of some people, and there's a belief that some, some people don't believe that. So sure, uh, that but could perception be debatable, but is reality. Perception is reality on both sides of the coin. Of if, course. if you're listening to Lou Dobbs or O'Reilly or, or Roger Hedgecock or Rick Roberts, those, that extreme point of view will be presented. But if you're listening to the mainstream, or you're listening to the church, or you're listening to people, that, the more normal people in this world, they don't believe that. And I, and, and I can verify that with numbers. We can verify that with facts. We, we can verify it not with throwing out these, these, these crazy uh, you know, terminology. Illegal aliens talk to NASA. We're human beings, whether they're documented or not documented. There's 200 million around the world. We have 5% of them in this country. Do we need immigration reform? Absolutely. But let's do it by building bridges of communication, not triple fences of separation. Three battalions a week? What's he talking about, three battalions a week coming across the world? That's nonsense. They, they can make these claims, but then say, where's the facts? But where's the, the proof is in the pudding. So I want to see documented. What well, you're cases. saying is illegal immigrants are not a drain on our schools or our health care. I wouldn't even say prisons. You no, know, no. Every, the, the, what I'm saying is that they contribute to this country and the fact that they use services, those types of services. The number one recipients of welfare in this country are Anglo men. It has nothing to do with migrants, it has nothing to do with women, it has nothing to do with people of color. 
the, the fact that we need educational reform in this country, no doubt about it. That doesn't have anything to do with the undocumented community. Health care reform, we need national health care reform, like the rest of the world, like Canada has, like Mexico has. Mm -hmm. So we need, there's reform that needs to take place. Sure, but because of the belief, yeah. Enrique, the, the, the belief, you hear it everywhere. Frustrations. Let me talk about some frustrations yeah. that I've heard that I wanted to bring to both of you. I got to press one for English. This is my country. Why do I have to do that? My gosh, we need translators. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, I've, I've got them here. Right. Uh, dual language mm -hmm. packaging. That costs a fortune, they say. Gee, I'm paying more for my shampoo because it has to be dual language and that cost. So frustrations yeah. on the man on the street seem to be bubbling up. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to that frustration, and then we'll talk to Enrique about it from his side? A absolutely. Regarding contributions by illegal aliens, say, well, they, they pay their taxes. Well, wait just a second. Uh, illegal aliens, those that are foreign nationals who have come here illegally and have an illegal status, those individuals many times are paid under the table. They pay nothing. Or they have brought in so much, so many of their family members that now they're in a zero tax bracket and many of them qualify for WICs or for or sustenance from, from the state. So to say they're contributory, it's a very small, small amount. The majority of the national, national um, people that have come here illegally, they're not contributory. We have a system called the green card. Come here the right way. We have a system to become a citizen. All you have to do is pass a medical. Why don't these folks want to pass a medical or take them? What, we learn a little bit of English, learn a little bit of history, be able to pledge allegiance to the red, white, and blue. Why is it that these folks say, we don't have to? I've talked with folks in Kenya and India and across the, the world who've been waiting seven, eight, and ten years to come here and do it in the right way when illegal aliens simply walk across the border and say, well, I'm here, accept me. And you're going to have to provide HUD housing, provide sustenance, and, and all types of income and welfare for me. Well, maybe someday you'll, you'll allow me to be all a right, citizen. All right, so now before we take a break, I just can't in all conscience take a break without allowing Enrique well, to course. respond to that. And I also am, am interested in hearing what Steve had to say about, I'm coming across the border from Mexico, and therefore I deserve, give me health, schools, and so forth. And your response, and then we'll take a break. I'll go back to what I've said all along. When was the last time you saw a Latino on a corner with a sign that says, we'll work for food? You don't see it. The people are here to do work. They're not here for the benefits. Are there exceptions? Of course. Are there the minority? But look at the statements that he's making and then look at the facts. Look at the facts that are put out there by the, the government agency uh, offices of the United States. They don't, they don't back that up at all, just to the contrary. The fact that the, the, the undocumented community is, 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 is giving billions of dollars to the system, whether it's Social Security, whether it's a false Social Security number or not, they never recuperate that. So when they do need those services, when they do have that emergency type of a situation, I hope they do go to the hospital. But believe me, they're not going over there and, and abusing that type of thing because they don't want to be deported. They want to be able to get in line. It's not as easy as, as what he's saying. If it was that easy, I assure you people would be doing that, but there is no line for them to get into. We need to have immigration reform where there's more visas. We need the workers in this country. Let's do it in a humane manner. Look what Europe did with the European Common Union. The poor uh, people from the poorer countries would go to the richer countries. All of a sudden, they have their European Common Union. There's been a balance now. Now you don't see the people going from country to country. They're working together, and that's what we need to do. His continued references to a particular community of people. I mean, his point of view and, and what I've said about racism is very obvious. And that's why I think it's very important that we, you know, if people can espouse their point of views, that's fine, because that's freedom of speech in this country. Like other, other countries have that, What too. about that's assimilation? I'm just, I'm just curious. And from, from the most point of view Most people do the, assimilate. Do they want to? The, yeah, most people do assimilate. That's why, that's why the people... do they want to? Well, that's an individual choice, but of most course. people have. Most people have. That's why, the, that's why you have the highest percentage of people becoming U.S. citizens are Latinos. The highest uh, Medals of Honor winner are Latin, in, in wars that they have given up their lives are Latinos. The highest deaths in the invasion of Iraq in World War II in Vietnam are Latinos. Are they assimilate? They're not only assimilating, they're dying for this country. We're the workers, we're the backbone of this country. Why is it now that we that are the, you know, the people with the brown skin, all of a sudden there's the protest because we want to showcase or, or talk about in our language or our heritage, we're proud of that. We'll always be proud of that. But it doesn't mean because you're proud to be Mexican or Guatemalan or from wherever you are that you're anti-American. On the contrary, to be the, this, one of the things that's made this country a great country is diversity. People from all over the world, even though people try to block out certain communities, that's not going to work. That's not going to work because things that were legal in this country at one time were slavery, not allowing uh, women to vote. So you can't, uh, you can't legislate morality. 
But we've got to stand up like we're standing up in a pacific manner and saying we demand human rights, and we're going to continue to do that. The isolated groups, the, you know, the vigilantes and so forth, they have the right to do what they do, the KKK and these types of groups. But the overwhelming majority of yeah, people... Yeah, that's very wily of you there, Enrique, you know, saying the Joe KKK McKechum, and the... Joe McKechum, Minuteman, KKK, Joe McKechum. This uh, is very difficult to have to take a break right now. I'm forced to do this. Documented cases. But, but here's what I'm going to do. You see my notes about all of these things? I'm going to toss these because here, there they go. Woohoo! we don't need them. Because when we get back, I want to hear what you two want to say to one another on behalf of the groups, on behalf of yourself. So okay. um, without notes, we're going to just come back after this break. Enrique Maronis of the Border Angels and Stephen Eichler of the Minuteman Project. They're going to talk to one another, and you're going to be listening. I'm Lynn Harper. This is Inside Southern California. Stay with us. And welcome back. You're watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper and my guest Enrique Moronis of the Border Angels and Steve Eichler of the Minuteman Project. I want to thank um, NBC 739, me San Diego TV 43 for the footage that you're watching. So, gentlemen, I, I want, isn't this terrible? I want to say, gentlemen, start your engines because I threw the notes away. I've already gotten out the beliefs that I catalog from all of my various sources. But this is the first time that the Border Angels and the Minuteman Project have actually sat within three feet of one another. I'm so tired of hearing a Border Angel say something, and then maybe a Minuteman Project will, and, and it gets lost in translation. Mm -hmm. So many times, Enrique has said something, you want to respond, you've said something, I feel Enrique's energy <laughs> over there. This is your chance to do that. So, let's see, the man with the biggest frustration quotient gets to start. Mm, that would be you. What well, do you want to I'm talk about? I'm not frustrated. I, we've been doing the same thing we've been doing for 20 years. So we're not a reactionary group. We're a group that's based on faith. We're very confident that if, uh, you know, if Jesus was walking the earth right now, we know what side he'd be on. He would definitely be a border angel. There's no doubt about that. And so we're very confident with what we're doing. We're helping our fellow man, and we're going to continue to help our fellow man. We're not looking for the media sensationalism like the, media, the Minutemen. Another misnomer, we were in Arizona last year when, when the Minutemen movement was supposed to get started there. A thousand Minutemen were supposed to be there. There was 143 Minutemen. That's it. When they were going to have their big group in San Diego on July 16th, then they changed it. Barbara Coe and Ron Prince, the authors of 187, they changed it because it was too hot in the summer, so they moved it to September. Jim Chase comes in, another person that was mental problems that gets uh, thrown out of the military. He starts his own Minutemen group. He comes here, he's going to have hundreds of Minutemen. He's got 40 Minutemen in Camp Okay, now let's move to Steve so, so because... So just tell the truth. Because now the, we've yeah. got another man right. with mental problems. Yeah. And According to documented. Enrique, Jim oh, yeah. Gilchrist, no. and now uh, Jim yeah. Chase. No, that's, um, that's absurd. Let's hear it. Mr. Mr. Jim Gilchrist, Mr. Jim Gilchrist is a combat wounded veteran, got the Purple Heart, honorably discharged, two presidential citations, so I'm not going to let you besmirch his name. That's, that's wrong of you. No, okay? but the thing that's is, wrong. he does have, men, there is that's mental wrong. problem. Look at his medical record. Why are, that he why got, are, that we, he got that. I agree why are that. we discussing a falsehood? The fact is <laughs> very simple. You and your organization believe in open borders. No, don't do that. You believe that illegal aliens, in other words, people from around the world have the right to come across the border. You have, they have the right to come here, and you are going to help them out. Don't believe that either. You are going to be able to provide them food, provide them water, so they can stay here. I think that's called aiding and abetting the enemy. You believe that it's okay for people to fly the red, white, and green. You even encourage it. You believe that simply because you have one million people on the streets of Los Angeles, or two million, or whatever it is, that that's it, signed, sealed, delivered. What you're failing to see is there are tens of millions, maybe even hundreds of millions of good citizens here in the United States who won't let you get away with it. They believe in the rule of law. They believe that it's right to come here the right way and wrong to come here the wrong way. That's why we have a green card system and that's why we have a way to be able to migrate in here naturally, normally, rule of law. Now, a question for you. Mm -hmm. Ask a question of Enrique so okay. that he can respond. Because you were telling Enrique okay. what he believed, and twice Enrique said, no, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. And so he's going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear you ask Enrique a question. Sure. I would like your response, to. and then I want him to ask you one I, so I can get a dialogue. Of, of course. Because I'm hearing you believe, no, I don't, and, and okay. it's time. So um, ask Enrique sure. one question. Okay. Go ahead. Describe to me what it would take to fix the problem. What problem? 
the problem meaning illegal immigrants coming to the United States. We need, what we need to do, what this country needs to do is have immigration reform. That's what the vast majority of the American public is saying. The millions of people that have come out and marched, uh, President Bush, the Senate, the leg legislative branch, now are, are, are going in our favor saying, you're absolutely right. We need immigration reform. We don't need armed vigilantes on the border looking for all this hype and having all these yahoos out there. What we need is we need to have intelligent debate, seeing how we can resolve this issue of the fact that this country needs the workers. Let's let them get a visa. That's what we need to do, and that's what, that's what all these marches are all about. That's what all of these organizational rallies are all about. We're as American as anybody else. We believe in the security and the sovereignty of one's nation. We, so, so you have no right to tell me what you think I believe. Because you're absolutely wrong. You have no right. I don't know what you believe either. I know what you're doing, and I can document what you're doing, and I have the medical history of Jim Chase or the medical history of Jim Gilchrist. That's documented. So if I say it's, it's one thing, you say it's another, look, up, look it up, and, and then you'll find out the truth. But I don't know what he believes or what you believe, but I know what you do. And so I let's know what's talk documented. about the two things that you said Enrique believes. Now, do you mean Enrique or the all-inclusive border angels? You're talking about this gentleman sitting here in this chair? This gentleman. Okay, what, were the, what were the things that you said Enrique believes and you said, no, I don't? What were those two things? That he believes in the open borders. No, I don't, said Enrique. That's right. Would you explain? We believe the, 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 what we believe in is the policy that Canada has or the European Common Union has that allows people to go from one country to the other in an organized, documented manner. That doesn't exist here. This is very limited supply of visas in the United States. That's why these people that are risking their lives and dying three per day crossing the border do that. Believe me, they, they would rather get in line and get a visa if they could. And the Mexican government does not want these people to leave. The people are leaving because they're hungry, just like people all over the world have left. You know, you had the situation in 1846 when the Americans wanted expansion. They invaded Mexico, took half the territory. Mexico is not invading anybody. What Mexico, what Mexico is doing is it's trying to resolve its issues. It's improving its economy, trying to feed its people, like the 200 countries, 220 countries around the world are doing. But here you have two varying economic uh, levels, the United States and Mexico, thus the people from the poorer country go to the richer country if they're the poorest of the poor. You don't see yeah, the, the, the middle the class issue or the, or the, uh, or the uh, upper the class issue. going across the now, border now, that way. Now, yeah, now we're getting down to, to yeah, something that absurd. you can respond to precisely. Yeah, so that, please that, do. That's absurd. What you're trying to do is blur the lines as if somehow, because there's migrants somewhere in the world, that somehow we're going to follow their model. Why is it that you, you and your organization are aiding and abetting known lawbreakers? Answer the question. We Why? Do, well, first of all, I don't need to, you know, the, the, the framing of the question is totally inappropriate. Border Angels is a faith-based group. We help our fellow man. If you go out there and your car breaks down and you need water, you would use the station. We've had, we have a case, one of our volunteers, her niece died out in the desert, a well-documented case mm -hmm. a few years ago. She was out there with, the niece was out there with, with her boyfriend, the niece and the boyfriend. The boyfriend happened to be a Marine. Their dune buggy breaks down, the Marine goes and looks for water, doesn't make it, dies. She's waiting for him to come back, doesn't make it, dies. The aunt of the, of the niece is now one of the border angels. So what we do is faith-based, we help our fellow man, we don't ask if the person is documented or not documented. We believe that we can all make a big difference as an individual, and that's what we're going to continue to do. You're doing Follow more these than principles, that. And, and that's why you're doing more our than work it continues to grow. Now, let's find out. Yeah. When you're, you say you're, they're you're, doing you're more, would you state what that is? You're pushing an agenda, which is bigger than just say, here's some water, here's a blanket. Uh, you're teaching an agenda that it's okay to break the law, and you are defaulting into a position where these people are coming in, and you're encouraging them by saying, if you're thirsty, we got some water, don't worry about it. That's what you're pushing an nobody, agenda, nobody not just saying, here for the you water. poor guy, let's have some water. You're not doing that. No, what no. You're, you're pushing a political agenda that more and more people are coming in here. Why? Because they know they won't die in the desert. They know that they won't have any problems. They can simply walk over the border. And to compare the United States to the European Union is absurd. We're a unique nation. Where there's nobody like us. We have laws and we have order that has been breached by millions and millions of illegal aliens. It, not once just it, a once few. again, if you're going to talk about illegal aliens, that's, you talk to NASA. But as far as the, the realities, the facts, once again, let's go back to the facts, not to the myths. 5% of the world's population lives in the United States. The United States consumes 80% of the world's illegal drugs. So where's the problem about drugs? Is it from another country or is it the fact that the United States consumes 80% of the world's illegal drugs. This has caused the cancer in Mexico, Bolivia, Peru, Colombia. It's the source. 
terrorism. They're, they're, these guys are out there saying that they're stopping out the platoons that he was mentioning. I want documented facts. I want names. Like I can give you the names of Patrick Habib, Minuteman arrested for having, holding seven people down at gunpoint. Chris Simcox, weapons taken away. The medical discharges of Chase and, and Gilchrist. The <laughs> Brian Barton arrested for forcing a t-shirt trying to incite a riot when we had the, the big protest here in San Diego on April 9th. These are documented cases. When you talk about the world's uh, situation, I'm not comparing country to country as saying, I'm, I'm talking about facts. 5% of the world's population, yet the United States is responsible for a third of the world's pollution. And so when they start saying, oh, the, the migrants leave trash, the United States is responsible for a, a third of the world's pollution. The United States policies, the, this failed administration that's in power right now, there's never been so much hate within the country Taking or towards the country. Taking it up to the, the national country. level okay. is absurd. Okay, but let's, let's, it's get, absurd. Let's, get, let's bring it all back down to what we were talking about, you know, okay. the, the questions. And uh, we were talking about, you had asked, Enrique, as mm -hmm. I remember, um, you want the folks to come to the United States, they have a reason they have to eat, they have to, to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, could it be also that Mexico is very pleased to have the folks leave Mexico to go to the United States and work because I read back. that $20 billion mm -hmm. is going into Mexico on an annual basis from the Mexicans who come here to work and another $20 billion, by the way, out to other countries other than Mexico, which makes $40 billion. Now, if I were getting $20 billion into my country and my country's number one business is the uh, oil, and number two is getting money from the United States. I don't think I'd be too quick to stop that. So from your perspective, I'd like to comment on, on Mexico's feelings about those folks sending the money back. Well, and, I, I, I could see that you would, you, would, you would not believe that, but I could, uh, I could assure you that the majority of the people do not feel that way. The, the situation is this, that why would a country want its people to leave that's going to cause social uh, disorder within the country, the breakup of families, the psychological damage to the people that are left behind? That's not a healthy situation. No. The fact that people contribute and give money back to their home countries, there's a million Americans living in Mexico. Some of them are undocumented. They go down there for different reasons, to retire, to learn Spanish. It's a whole different but dynamic. But it's the second largest um, industry is money coming in from the United States, $20 billion. Yeah, and, it, and, and it's also the second largest source of Social Security for the United States. The undocumented community, when they're giving pain into the Social Security system, is the second largest source of Social Security to the Social Security system of the United States. So, so then, so then you can use the argument that? on both sides because how they get they a falsified that? Social Security number. Falsified Social Security. And, and the employer takes the money out, and that money goes to Social falsified Security. Driver's well, let's, let's, let's falsified driver's license and falsified voting. That's why we need to have a situation where they can get the, the real document. I want to know that the guy driving next to me that's going to work, that's going to pick the fruit to take care of your kids, has taken the driver's test, has insurance, has registration. The only way he can do that is if he gets a valid driver's license. He can't do that. So, so what happens? The person drives anyways, gets in an accident, doesn't so know. So now the, we're going to reward the, illegal aliens no. with driver's licenses. No. The thing is that the Welcome people, one and all. Come on, six billion people across the world. Just come on here. Here's your driver's license. Please vote for me. Here's your social security card. Come on. What? That's a political orgy. The thing is that you're looking at it as if everybody wants to come to this country. You said six billion, and we're talking about only ten million have come to this country, and most of them are. And there's a, there's a. Well, where a, are you getting your numbers? Show, you say documentation. May yeah. I have it, please? Okay, the Pew, Send the me the Pew documentation. Hispanic Institute. Show me the documentation. Well, look it up on the website. The Pew Hispanic Institute. A website. It's from ten to twelve percent. It's by the U.S. government. The U.S. government statistics. The census. Ten to twelve undocumented people in the country right now. That's the census right now. That's documentation. And the thing is that the overwhelming majority of the people that are coming here are coming here legally. Ten to twelve are the undocumented Stern's, people, of which a third, of which Stern's a third, Stern's organization, are, are people. which is the second largest CPA firm or third largest CPA in the United States, say there's 23, illegal, 23 million illegal aliens here. 23 million, not 12 million. Right. Since when are government statistics the Bible, the Word? They're not the Word. We have seen. Um, Numbers of CPA firms say it's well over 12 million. And we see but, 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 but the fact but, but, is, but the U.S. Census and the U.S. Census, the the respected uh -huh. uh, publications in the country, uh -huh. Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, Business Week magazine, when they talk about the undocumented population, and these studies are coming over and over, uh -huh. they're talking from 10 to 12. But I don't want to get into an but, issue but if it's 23 the fact or if it's is, three. If, if there's Ste so many Stephen jobs Reagan, waiting for uh, them, why are they at the street speaking corners? Speaking of jobs, let me let because me. They're going to get picked up to go to work. Let's get once again. Let's get once again into a specific question, and this would be the question. Um, again, back from the frustrations of people saying, gee, we could have open borders. Open borders are a pain for people on this side of the border as well as they are for the people on the other side of the border. They're a pain and they're getting worse. And, and Americans are saying we're losing our freedoms because we have to watch all of this. They are saying if we could have an open border and if employers would demand proper, the jobs would dry up and people would go away. Okay, 
I'm oversimplifying, but to you, Enrique, and then you can comment. What, how do you feel about America saying, you know what, now we're going to crack down. Every employer that hires someone who is here illegally is going to jail, kind of like this latest case. What do you think about a policy that, that this country would adapt now? What do you think? What, what, what it proves is that we need immigration reform. What's going on right yeah, but now? But what do you think it, about that specific policy? Well, well, the thing is that you can't be hired unless you have paperwork. Yeah, you should be able to get the paper. You should be able to get the paperwork. That's Why what I think about that. Why isn't that happening? I'm wondering. What do you because think? Because people in Washington are, are, are still debating this issue. Well, uh, they're debating and why this do you issue. Think? Why Three do you people think? die every day because what's happening is, is that this is it slave labor, Enrique? Is that what we're after? In many cases, after? in many cases, it is because that's why the, the price of your lettuce is so inexpensive. That's why the, the price of taking care of kids is so inexpensive. But people would argue yes, but it costs more for health care. I'd rather. But it's, but a it's dollar not, ahead but for it's not a, This well, is the well, arguments I'm talking about. Yeah, this is the, the argument on both sides. You, said I, question. I question. you right. said I could ask him a question. Uh, I want to ask him a question. All right. I can't. Uh, did I you have any comments on what we just said about that? And then Enrique will ask the question. Well, since when do we prostitute out the economy of the United States of America? Because it's cheap, we'll do anything for it? Come on. There has to be ethics and morals behind it. My head of lettuce costs, what, $1.40, $1.42 at the, the grocery store. Maybe it'll cost me $1.60 without illegal immigration. That's the cost it, that we have to pay to be moral, not to prostitute ourselves out and say, because we can use cheap flesh labor, we get our stuff free or we get ourselves cheap. Okay, now That's that wrong. having been said, Enrique has a question, Please. Yeah. which I'm going to ask Enrique to hold in his head okay. because I need to take a break. And everyone else is going to wonder, what is Enrique Morones of the Border <laughs> Angels is going to ask Stephen Eichler of the Minuteman Project? Well, guess what? We'll find out after this, so stay with us. You're watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper, and our subject is illegal immigration. Not immigration, illegal immigration. And, of course, my guest, Enrique Morones, thank you so much, and Stephen Eichler, uh, the Border Angels and the Project Minutemen, or Minuteman Project. When we took our break, I think uh, you will recall that Enrique had a question which I asked him to hold, and he did. We have no idea what it is. It's your time. Well, it's real simple. You had said that we both had an opportunity for a question. Yes. He asked his. Just during the break there, you were looking at uh, Brian Barton, one of the Minutemen, you know, giving the high Hitler sign, trying to cause a riot at the demonstration that we did with 150,000 people. You see that when the Minutemen do a, a rally or a protest, they get a few dozen, you know, a few hundred at the most. And my question is this. I, I want some facts. I've mentioned names of real cases, whether it's Brian Barton, whether it's Patrick Habib, whether it's Joe McKetchum, National Alliance, KKK, confirmed cases, people that have been arrested. I want some names. I want you to give me some names. You said these three battalions. Who are these battalions coming across the border? And can you name some people that have actually come across the Mexican border that were undocumented people that ended up being claimed terrorists? I wanted some names and some dates. Specific mm -hmm. cases, not mm -hmm. just general information. So mm -hmm. if you could give me some specific uh, names, dates, okay. and, and who these three battalions okay. are that you're Fair talking question. about that come across yes, every week. Steve? Yes. Okay. That is information that I've received from the Border Patrol. But, but they, I want information because we received the same information because they okay. have to give it to the Mexican The Border government. Patrol has said that the Im immigration has gone up over 300 percent. But the, you do the battalions, math, though, the battalions. Do, do the math, and you'll find out instead of 2 million people coming across the southern border, it's now 3 million people. Take 3 million people, you simply divide it down by 52 weeks, and you have about 40,000, 50,000 people coming across the border. Do the math, and you can see that. Now, these are people who don't have names. These are people who don't have Social Security numbers. These are people who come here and can assume any name any social security number, go to any identification mill, and become you tomorrow. Become but, but our host tomorrow. Who are the battalions? And, and what are some of the names of people that have been detained that have been confirmed terrorists? That's what I'm asking. I'm not asking about I the never said confirmed terrorists. But I your website said says that. Your website says approximately that three battalions more are coming across the border now. The battalions, in, in, that implies military. Mm -hmm. So na name one battalion. Name a battalion. You, you said there's three battalions a week. <laughs> there's no battalions coming across the border. There's people coming can, across the border. If you can but understand no military, the no. amount of a battalions, the men or women in a battalion, that's an equivalent size of the new people that are coming across the border in addition to those that are flowing So no here. military battalions, no terrorists. Oh, right? there's been over 1,100 incursions come across the southern border by the Mexican military. Did you just document, go, tell, tell me one, just one, just give me the date and, and, and the incident that it really happened. Don't want you to say in general or you got this information because this is public information mm -hmm. and we can look this up. And this, go ahead. These, these have all been, so you can't name one. I can name names, but you can't name any. Oh, I see. Well, the facts are very simple. 
Since you want to look them up, you can just go right so ahead can't name and look them okay. up. No, it's not a matter of can't name. It, it, no, these it are is a matter people, because you're throwing out this people. rhetoric, but you can't back it up. Okay, so what these we've are, done is that... These are people that are coming gonna, across the border say, let's who stop. have no names. Hold on, because it's Enrique saying name a name, and Steve's saying, I'm not going to name a name, look on the website. So now we're starting to repeat. And what we're going to miss, if we continue on this vein, is what's next. Enrique, I know you have things coming up. Uh, what you can share with us about what is coming up May 1st, there may be something coming up. What are you, Enrique Moronis, going to be doing? On uh, May 1st, as we've already announced, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a drive for voter registration. We're going to have civic participation, do a letter uh, signing drive to Senators Boxer and Feinstein. We're going to be speaking at schools during the day, talking about the importance of civic, Pacific participation, as, we, as we've been demonstrating. There's other groups that may be doing other things, and uh, we're not going to you know, criticize as long as everything is peaceful, legal, like what we've right. been and doing. And what do you want to accomplish we, with what, the demonstration? What we want to continue to prove is, first of all, that the, the American people are good people. That's why they're overwhelmingly supporting us. That's why we, our, our numbers continue to grow in the millions documented. You can see the footage. I mean, you can see yes. the footage. It's easy for me to say we had 400 people or 300. But, and I mean, what do you 12. want to accomplish? What is it, if you could wave a magic wand, what do you want to happen? What we, what, we're, what, we're, what we want to accomplish is what we're accomplishing, which we're getting Washington to see that we need humane immigration reform. Okay, humane immigration, immigration reform, reform. Yeah. which means? Which means a pathway to legalization. All right. It means that there's, there's various bills out there. As long as there's a pathway for the people that have come here that have contributed so much, which is the undocumented community, that they have a pathway to legalization. Okay, now I got it. That, what I don't want, I want them to get know. in front of line. Okay. I want them to be able to get okay, in You line. don't want them to get in front, but you want them to get in. Stephen, what is wrong with that? Well, there's a lot. What that was is amnesty. We want to reward people who are coming here illegally and say, it's okay, we can fix it now after you're here. We can grandfather you in, we'll figure it out for you. Because you're here illegally, well, don't worry about it. We've got all these people all lobbying for you so that you can get the stamp of approval. So the law means nothing. That's, that's what he's saying. Okay. No, that's not what I'm saying. Now let me ask what both else? of you one quick question, then we have to take um, another sure. break. You both have never been in the same room together. No. You now have. You've had a dialogue. And of course, mm -hmm. I didn't expect it all to be roses. Do you think if you have enough dialogues like this, you're going to find some point of agreement? Well, come on, don't all speak at once <laughs> here. Come on. Steven. Well, I think, I think the views are diametrically opposite. Rick, do you agree with that? Uh, we, we respond to, to one authority, and that, that authority, is, it comes, that message comes from above. Help your fellow man, love your, your neighbor. Well, That's what we respond to. Then That's I'm going to take a break, to to and uh, we, we will be sitting here and possibly silenced, but we will indeed be back. <laughs> so you are watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper. Here are my guests, and uh, be right back. And welcome back to Inside Southern California. Sad to say, we only have enough time to have some closing statements from my guests, Enrique Moronis of the Border Angels and Steve Eichler of the Minuteman Project. So, Enrique, uh, I think I'll start with you and give me about 30 seconds. What's the last thing you want the viewers to hear from you? Well, then, thank you very much for this opportunity. I want to you know, let everybody know that we're a faith-based organization. This is a great country with great people. You've heard the rhetoric and you've heard the facts. And we know that we're all of the same race, the human race. It's time that we started treating each other in that manner. We're going to continue to do so. Uh, I think it's important that people come out and join us as they have in the millions and say, you know, you are part of America. We welcome you. We want to thank you for the work that you're doing. And we want you to have a line to get into because we do need humane immigration reform. Okay, That's what we're going to continue to, to, to I, And I thank you for that. And I wish we had more time. Uh, and Stephen, same mm -hmm. thing with you. Sure. I do want to thank you. And all the Minutemen, thank you. At our website, minutemanproject.com, is the facts. And the facts is, screams volumes. We believe in the rule of law. We believe that we have the laws on the books, just enforce them. It's not the laws that are broken, it's the will in Capitol Hill. We want to change that, and we want to be able to change Capitol Hill for those people who are not willing to back us up and back up the law. They need to be unelected. Okay, and I thank you very much, Steve. And I thank you all for watching. Um, we've had two diametrically opposed gentlemen who are leading two very important groups. They don't think they're going to be able to get together. Uh, who knows what the future is going to hold. But I'm glad that you've been watching Inside Southern California. I'm Lynn Harper, and we'll see you again.